April 25, 2022. We lost football great Daryl LaMonica. He lived 80 years and was the first big name Raider quarterback. His nickname, the Mad Bomber, was given to him for throwing the long bomb no matter what the situation was. He took the Raiders to three AFL championship games and won the AFC championship to take them to Super Bowl II, where they lost to the Green Bay Packers at the Miami Orange Bowl, 33-14. In the 1970 season AFC Championship, LaMonica led the Raiders into Baltimore to play Johnny Unitas and the Colts and got knocked out of the game. George Blanda, the field goal kicker, filled in as quarterback and led a comeback, but they still lost 27-17. The Colts went on to beat the Dallas Cowboys in the Super Bowl with a field goal in the last five seconds, 16-13 they won. That year, field goal kicker George Blanda filled in for Darrell at age 43 and had four wins and one tie as a starter. I already mentioned in my previous video that I'm hoping for Danny Gray, wide receiver, followed by JT Woods, cornerback, and then Lucas Abraham, offensive tackle. I'm hoping they find somebody the others missed in the last two rounds. I was thinking we need a center understudy until I reconsidered our current situation. Andre James is freaking awesome, and anyone who says otherwise is going to have to answer to a certain Raiderette. But he could get injured. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Brett Heggie is the backup center right now out of Florida, 6'4", 310 pounds. This guy needs a lot of work this year. He needs to strengthen his inner core, additional arm and leg strength and help, and work on his hands technique. If he pushes himself this preseason, he could be a great backup center or guard. He's played both, but he needs a lot of improving to get to where we need him. Football is in his blood, though. I think he can do it. It doesn't hurt knowing that your team has what it takes to make it to the Super Bowl and to encourage you to improve yourself. Levi Edwards of Raiders.com thinks they might take a couple of linebackers. Troy Anderson, linebacker Montana State, and Chad Muma of Wyoming. They sound like good picks, but will they still be available at number 26? And do you take them before wide receiver Danny Gray? We'll see, but I don't think so. Owner Mark Davis lit the Las Vegas sign with silver and black lights. The NFL schedule is to be announced May 12th, but I already mentioned in my previous video, we have the AFC South and the NFC West, so we don't have to travel much. In fact, this will probably be our least amount of travel for a long time to come. Most of the teams we play are playoff contenders. Rachel Gosen just put out the home and away list for games. At home, we have the Denver Broncos, Kansas City Chiefs, Los Angeles Chargers, of course, and then the Houston Texans, Indianapolis Colts, Arizona Cardinals, San Francisco 49ers, and New England Patriots. And then away, we have the Denver Broncos, Kansas City Chiefs, and Los Angeles Chargers, of course. And then Jacksonville Jaguars, Tennessee Titans, Los Angeles Rams, Seattle Seahawks, Pittsburgh Steelers, and the New Orleans Saints. Hardest away games, I think, are the Broncos, Chiefs, Chargers, Titans, and the Super Bowl champ Rams. I'm really glad we have the Colts, Cardinals, 49ers, and Patriots at home. We play in L.A. twice, and that's almost like a home game. I'm thinking one of the away games is going to be an international game, so basically away for both teams. Fan Nation Raider Maven reports Saints are in Tottenham in England. I'm thinking we will play the Saints away game in Tottenham since we are not listed as a home international team. But we could play the Jaguars in Wembley Stadium in London, but we play them in the Hall of Fame's preseason game. So that would be a oh wait. They are the furthest away game we have. So on second thought, maybe Jacksonville wouldn't be so bad after all. It would cut almost 1,100 miles round trip of our travel schedule compared to playing New Orleans in uh, England. So uh, yeah, it'd be great if we did have Jacksonville overseas. I would like to play the Saints in New Orleans though on uh, Thanksgiving night and have a Cajun spiced turkey with cornbread stuffing and collard greens with ham hock. But shoot, if I go Cajun, it's got to be gumbo, fried okra, and hush puppies, I'm thinking. This just in from CBS Sports. It looks like it's going to be a silver and black Christmas. While most of the week 16 games will be Saturday afternoon, NFL is planning on an NFL game before Christmas Eve on the NFL Network. And then three games Christmas Day. One on CBS, one on Fox, and then the night game on NBC. One of the Christmas Day games may be the Raiders, 1 p.m., 4 p.m., and 8, 15 p.m., all Eastern time. Wi-Fi Willie is reporting that Waller is going to be traded first day of the draft for a first round and second round pick from Green Bay. 
I don't like it. I think it's beneath Ziggler and McDaniels to do something like that this year. I mean, if they were thinking of doing something like that, they should have kept their draft picks and got a rookie wide receiver in the first round instead of Devontae Adams and still have Waller. Unless he's still injured and they don't think he'll ever play to his potential again. That may be a different story entirely, but if that's the case, I don't think the other teams are going to give him that much. Sanjit T reported multiple sources are saying this trade is to go down right at the beginning of the draft. I'm guessing they would get a first and a third round for him. Everyone says Green Bay will be the team to take him, but he's open for the highest bidder. Derek Carr tweeted, no chance, lots of laughs. If they are really going to do this, they'll need to take a wide receiver first and a tight end second with those picks. Josh Jacobs might not be with us in 2023 either, uh, unless we pick up the fifth-year option. We'll have to make contingency plans if someone offers them more than we can pay. It looks like the final decisions have been made on the 2022 Raiderette roster. You can check them out at raiders.com forward slash Raiderettes forward slash roster. Vote in the comments who your favorite one is. I kind of think they saved the best for last. I don't like the charcoal gray outfits. I'd prefer gloss black where there is black on the outfit as opposed to charcoal gray. More like the Henderson practice facility. I mean, this is our Super Bowl season. They should really stand out and be stunning. They can wear charcoal when we're an ash heap. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.